Intro. Time to do an intro. Intro. Alan. I, I, I don't think we need one. I think that was it. I, we can't use that because that's the tune of Red. <laughs> don't say it. Okay. No one will know it. Welcome back to another episode of The Fick List. You guys might not feel it, but we certainly have. It has been a long time, Erin, since we have sat together. It has been a long time. When was our last recording? Like like eight years ago? Yeah, sounds about right. Much like fanfic authors, <laughs> we took our sweet time in between updates. Yeah, author's note right here. Yes. Yeah. Our school was crazy. Yeah, life is really crazy over here right now, guys. I'm, like, trying to write, but it's hard. So, like, thank you for your patience yes. with me. Um, I'm really hoping to get the next chap of this out as soon as possible, but no guarantees. I already kind of know where the story's going, so it shouldn't be too much longer, but... But I can't make any promises, so... <laughs> So, what are we talking about today, Erin? What are what are our, our, our tags? So, our tags for today, the general tag is blind dating. Ooh. I love a blind date We tag. love a good blind date. And the AU for this week is Cinderella AU. Ah. Ooh. Also something I deeply enjoy, but read less of. I feel like it's harder to find Cinderella yeah. AU stuff. That's true. It's a sort of niche AU. Like, yeah. we've done a lot of very common AUs, mm-hmm. and this one is a little more niche. It doesn't always work. Yeah, agreed. So yeah. I'm also always very interested in the liberties that people take with it because generally it's like you can either take like like the Disney approach or mm-hmm. you can take like the fairy tale approach. Yeah, you can go really kind of fluffy or you can go really yeah. angsty, yep. like real deep yep, angst. Yep. And anywhere in between. Exactly. So, so should we start with the general tag, which is our blind date? Yes. Do you want to start? Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Okay. So what did I send you? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. The the one you sent me, Aaron, is titled "Just Like Kisses on the Necks of Best Friends" by Kiras Kira Kiras. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? It's Q I R A S. It is on archive of our own, and it is a. Marvel Cinematic Universe one with Darcy Lewis and Stephen Grant to Rogers. Are we at all surprised by this turn of events? Because we shouldn't be. Well, I definitely am not, no. I am quite surprised at the pairing. Not just because it's like a mm. uh, female male, but do they even interact at no. all in, in the universe? I didn't no. think so. No, they, they don't interact in the universe at all. Darcy is barely in anything. Right. She's not even in the third Thor movie. Uh-huh. And I think that was actually a sort of external thing. I think her and Natalie Portman exited the Thor universe at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't know much beyond that. But uh, she is not a character who is really involved in the MCU past the first two Thor movies. Right. Interesting. But I love her. She's great. To me, it almost makes it better because there's very little you have to compete with canon-wise, so you can make her whatever you want her to be. That's true. I guess that is true. Yeah. I was just, I was very shook when I saw the pairing. I was like, excuse me? Mm -hmm. Do they even talk to each other? Yeah. Uh, Here's the summary for it. Based on the prompt... Our asshole mutual friends set us up on a blind date, so instead of getting to know each other, we spent the whole date scheming against them, and we decided an awesome way to get back at them would be to pretend to date and then have a horrendous breakup, but now that we're two months into this this charade, we're not sure what's real and what's fake anymore. I mean, yeah, yeah that's that, what that it is. Sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, we're done. Moving yeah, on. That's the story. You know what's really funny is that I came across... I didn't realize how... A lot of fanfic authors will sometimes take, like, a prompt like this, and, mm-hmm. like, it's just all over. I, I read a story with this prompt, but it was a different... I think I might have also seen it for the fake dating, because it's a... Oh, uh, it, it is also fake it dating. It turned very fake dating in the middle. Yeah, it starts with a blind date, and then it becomes fake dating, yeah, yeah. and then it becomes enemies to lovers, which <laughs> is the best. So we just hit a bunch of tags in one. It's kind of a slow burn. <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. You can tell what I go for right away. Yeah, absolutely. It has you written all over it. Yep. It was good. I had. A, I feel like I always start that way. Yeah. Exactly the same it's thing. Good. Yeah, it's fine. it was a good time. I feel like 
It felt... I, hang on, I wrote some notes while I was reading, because I was wow. like, I, I don't want to forget things. Your dedication to the podcast is <laughs> astonishing. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, it felt like it was a lot more um, telling you what was happening instead yeah. of showing you. It just very much felt like all of their, like, attraction and, like, all of oh, the, the yeah. slow burn felt very much like they were telling you it was happening. As mm-hmm. opposed to, like, you know, you get to be there and feel it. In fact, one of the things is that they go on their first date and they, like, it just immediately happens until, like, we can make this awkward or we can get back to our, fr- get back at our friends by pretending to fake date. And they're like, okay, cool. And then they, like, cut to a different scene. Mm-hmm. And then when they're asked about the first date, they're like, oh, well, we talked about, like, The Hobbit and Tolkien and, like, movies better, movies versus the books type thing. And I was like, well, why didn't we see that? I didn't yeah. get to see, like, the chemistry build or anything. And then fast forward a bit longer and they're like, oh, yeah, we went on our second date. We went to a museum and there's a cute cafe. And I was like, I want to go to the cute cafe. <laughs> Like, take me along for yeah, this ride. Exactly. I'm just here. I'm stuck in this tower where they all live, apparently. Oh, my God. The Avengers <laughs> Tower thing is so funny. So the Avengers universe, the fandom in general, had an idea of what was going to happen post-first Avengers. That is not at all what happened <laughs> in the actual movie verse. And there was this whole, like, fandom really wanted all of the Avengers to live together Absolutely. in Avengers Tower, and Tony Stark was going to, like, ho- house and feed everybody, yes. and hijinks would ensue, yes. and it would have been great. And that is what the fandom has decided happened <laughs> in fanfic. The Avengers Tower thing... Brings my heart a certain amount of yep, joy. Yep, yep. Because it's just such a fandom fix it I thing. I love it. Yeah. It's that's... such a good, like, uh, all of them living together yeah. and, like, uh. It's also a roommate thing! Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Aaron's just overextended. Uh, as per usual, I went too hard at the sauce. <laughs> so, I think that was my biggest gripe with the story is I felt like I didn't. I didn't, I wasn't invested in the relationship. I didn't really care because it was very much like, it also does that thing that like, uh, I remember reading a lot, uh, when I was starting to like dabble into fan fiction, which is the like, oh, Aaron looks so good in that sweater day good day. Wait, no, I'm not thinking Aaron looks good. No, that's weird. Stop. Like yeah. you're, it's, you're in their thoughts and it's that thing where like, wait, I didn't mean to think that. Yeah. And that's not really how people talk to themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Or at least I don't. Yeah, I, I feel... Maybe I shouldn't generalize, but right. like, that's not my internal monologue. Well, the two people in this room do not have that internal monologue, you Yeah, know? We get... 100% of the people in this room <laughs> <laughs> are, do agree. Exactly. And uh, t- they start talking... Uh, she asks him about uh, Harry Potter because she lent him the books because he hadn't read them, obviously. Yeah, sure. And she asks him, oh, what book are you on? He's like, oh, I just started the seventh book. And she asks, how do you feel about Snape? And I was like... What are you doing? Stop immediately. And he's like, oh, I hate him. And, not, and she's like, well, in the seventh book, he does something that like kind of redeems him in some people's eyes. And I was mm-hmm. like, what is your problem, Darcy? <laughs> Why would you do this? You didn't even lead with, can I spoil it for exactly. you? Exactly. I was like, what's your problem? Yeah. Uh, I love that that's what you take the greatest issue with, <laughs> is fictional characters spoiling more fiction for each other. I just, like, there is no universe where you could live, like, if, if that happened to me in real life, if someone spoiled something like that for me, it'd be like, I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> peace. It was cool up until right now. <laughs> and it got so intense so quickly, like, they were in love within, yeah. like, two weeks or something, and I was like, oof. Let's let's calm down for a second. Is this a one shot? No, it's five chapters. Oh, it's five chapters. chapters. So there's no excuse there. <laughs> I was trying to like play the one shot advocate game. I was like, they had to get stuff done pretty quick because it's a one shot. Nope. <laughs> nah. Um, it's just five parts of jumping in feet first. <laughs> it's very fun. Like I can and I can definitely see like you like someone reading this and be like, oh, that hits the spot. You yeah, know? I'm pretty sure I remember this being one of those fan fictions where I was just like. We don't ask too many questions, yeah. and we just let some things go. Yeah, that's fair. Coming out of Endgame, I turned to my friends who were there, and I was like, you know what? I so thoroughly enjoyed this movie that I'm going to put some of the questions I have in a box on a shelf and not open it, because <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, fascinating. And that's how I feel about a lot of fan fiction. <laughs> put all of my questions in a box on a shelf in disregard. <laughs> that's incredible. I thought it was enjoyable. I just wanted to care more. Like, I wanted to be in it, you know? Yeah, that's fair. 
<laughs> you can they can't all be home runs, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> they can't all be winners. <laughs> So what would you rate this fic? I'd say a solid 2.5 out of okay. 5. Definitely readable. I love, like you mentioned, the the Avengers Tower. I love that when fandoms do something like that where they, everyone lives together. It's like mm-hmm. that fantasy when you have a kid like, I want my house to be connected to my best friend's house with like underground tunnels. Like Then we can hang out all the time. I, I don't know. I, I dig that. Yeah. It was cool. All right. So let's talk about the one I sent you. Let's. Oh, dear. <laughs> Alan... Yes. What was this? <laughs> I was so confused. I was so like worried. Is this like? Did you mean to send me this? Uh, hang on. Let me let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Is this the Hobbit one? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Alan. Alan, no. <laughs> this was not my fanfic. Uh, a of all, I don't know Lord of the Rings at all. Sure. So sure. following, and half of my problem with Lord of the Names is just, or Lord of the Names. <laughs> <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Lord of the Names. Half of my problem with Lord of the Rings is, is the, the names. names. Which wasn't helped in the streaming <laughs> because it's all of their names. And I'm like, who the fuck is Dwalin? <laughs> <laughs> Google a picture, who, Aaron. <laughs> who is Dis? <laughs> who is Dis? Google I, a picture. I didn't want to. <laughs> I couldn't follow it. And like, all right, well, okay, let's, let's what, go what, back. Yes, what, are, what is the fake? The fic is called Dating Blind by Bad Skippy, uh-huh. which is actually a really great <laughs> So the summary is, Bilbo isn't having a great deal of luck lately. Not in the dating department, anyway. The only good things have been that new restaurant and the handsome waiter. He's so nice. But Dwalin may have figured out exactly why Bilbo has been having such a hard time of it. Super huge thanks to Nerdy Art for all the fabulous artwork <laughs> throughout this fic. <laughs> Bilbo goes on a bunch of really bad blind dates. Yes. Set up by... His friend, Nori? Yes. Okay. Nori's an idiot. Correct. <laughs> and keeps setting Bilbo <laughs> up with these men who are just terrible. So the first one is really rude and, like, keeps insulting the waiter and complaining. And then the second one is kind of a schmoozer. And then his credit card gets declined? Yeah. Is that what happens? I think so. He's very sort of like over the top, like, get the most expensive thing on the menu, blah, blah, blah. And then his yeah. credit card doesn't go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The third one yeah, is one married. One. Yeah. So Nori sets him up with a guy who turns out to be married. Uh, and he freaks out, obviously, because he's like, what the fuck? Uh, and then he goes on a date with somebody who is a friend of another person that he's friends with, who is a tube driver, is what I heard, what I remember reading. It's been so long. I think I picked this this pick out like two months ago. I don't remember. That's fair. His name is Bob. Yeah, Um, Bob. He gets. (laughs) You remember that one? I do because that is the only name I can pronounce. (laughs) He gets smashed at the bar and pukes on Bilbo's shoes and then goes home early. Yes, yes. Uh, And they they had had a really good connection too up until he started getting drunk. Yeah, and it goes poorly through this whole time. They're go. He's Bilbo's going to the same restaurant Mm -hmm. over and over, and he's being served by the same waiter over and over, or the same waiter is around. Yeah. For every date. And so you start off reading this exchange about how Bilbo is like, I give up on dating. (laughs) I don't want to do this anymore. I keep getting stuck with these idiots and Nori's a terrible judge of character and blah, blah, blah. Yep, yep. And then it switches to Thorin is his name? Yes. Thorin is the waiter who apparently has a man bun. It turns out that he's been sabotaging all of the dates that Bilbo has been going on. (laughs) Not necessarily that these people weren't terrible right like some of them but he has been actively helping bilbo realize how terrible they are yeah that is where it turned real bad for me because it's one thing to like gently oversalt someone's plate as he does (laughs) in in the thing and then it's a totally different thing with bob he like actively overserved him alcohol so he would get drunk really fast yeah and th- I was like, this is a fanfic that is glorifying a certain level of really creepy behavior uh-huh. that I could not get through. Did you not finish it? I did finish it. And yes, he has to apologize for yeah. it. And he cops to it, but I didn't think it was good enough. I don't know. I feel like he felt very guilty the whole time. Mm-hmm. after, And specifically after that one. No. I couldn't get over it. That's fair. I could not get past, because if that, I tried to picture, if that happened to me, like, if there was somebody who sabotaged a bunch of dates that I went on to try to, like, coerce his way into some kind of, like, situation where we could go on a date, like, the answer would be absolutely fucking not. Right. Like, the behavior was so predatory to me, but it was framed in such a way that was meant to be positive that I couldn't get through it. 
and I really didn't like it. Okay. I mean, I guess that's fair. But I also think that the whole thing was that he, like, the first three were, like, they were genuinely trying to take advantage of yeah. Bilbo. But, like, even if that's true, not your job to do yeah, that. Like, I, I still that. was like, mm-mm. Yeah. This is creepy to me. Okay, that's fair. So, I think we've talked about this before with fan fiction, but sometimes behaviors that are not acceptable in the real world happen in fan fiction, mm-hmm. and are treated differently than they would be in real life. This, to me, read like that. It also wasn't the best written thing. No. And it was very like, and then Bilbo was sad. (laughs) Yes. Like, I can't do this. So this was this was not a fan fiction I particularly enjoyed. Sorry. No, that's fair. Friendo. <laughs> One of the reasons I chose this, uh, and I'm also have ne- I've not seen all of the Hobbits. I haven't read the book. My goal now is that every episode I would like to bring in a fandom that I am that has not been brought up before mm. and that I am vaguely aware of. And Hobbit just happened to fit in that section, mm. and I was like, okay. This is fine. As opposed to me, where I'm like, I'm going to keep sending you Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars and MCU. <laughs> and MCU. And, you know, whatever else I happen to be reading at the time. I mean, the the fact of the matter is, at some point I'll run out. <laughs> I will run out of things to, like... That's true. ...to, like, pull from, so we will eventually recycle. But yeah. I was like, I'll keep finding things that I, yeah. I, I'm kind of aware of. So, yeah, I was... I, I kind of compromised on it, because I was like, that was all right. Yeah. Like, I was like, that's cute, toward the end. And I was like, yeah, fine. I guess. But yeah, I can to- I, I totally see where you're coming from. I got nothing else on it. But that, that is, no, I did that's not like it. perfectly fine. The cartoons were cute. They were cute. Yeah, there's there some was... illustrations that are adorable. But I don't think that helped make me think of it in more mature terms. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. The cartoons, I think, re-emphasized sort of the youthfulness of the prose. Because the artwork, while really well done, is more, like, cartoony and playful. Sure. So it didn't help matters okay. in that way. Yeah, so um, that. Although it was delightful. I mean, who doesn't <laughs> want a cartoon of a big burly man in a man bun, like, holding on to you? Yeah, of yeah, course. Great. Just paste your, your, your picture on, the, on Bilbo's face. into that. Yeah. I mean, have you seen Jason Momoa, for example? Like, yeah. A good, good example. Could, could, would say yes. Yeah. There was a lot of exclamation points in this. There was a lot of, like, enthusiasm. There was a lot of dialogue. Like, it was almost entirely... Well, not almost entirely, but I would Uh, say a good 75% was dialogue. It was a lot of dialogue, and it was a lot of italicized internal monologue. Oh, yeah. Which is a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that also tends to be an indicator of a... Or a a slightly younger tone thing. Like we were just talking about. Like, this internal monologue thing. Like, people don't really... They don't have conversations with themselves in that way. Right. In the way that we were just talking about with the other fic, too. What would you rate it? One out of five. That's that's kind. Is it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I definitely thought I, you were going like zero. I was gonna go lower, but like, it's not that bad. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm reserving zero for like, like yeah, maliciously I bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, you tried to make this terrible. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This makes me s- slightly sad. I think... This is probably going to have to be one of the first tags we revisit. <laughs> yeah. Just because both of ours seem to be misses to each other. Yeah. We both were like, oh no. <laughs> we, so, we were so excited about the yeah. blind date. Well, blind dates can be really fun, but I think... It's also really yeah, hard. It is really hard. It's hard to do well. Yeah. It's hard because I think blind dates shows a little bit of what you like when you're reading them what you as a person as a reader Mm -hmm. find sort of like on the surface level attractive Mm. and if those things don't line up for people if you're sending recommendations like clearly i value like snark and (laughs) (laughs) you know like sarcasm and like sense of humor and you know going out for sushi and stuff like that (laughs) And I think we've talked about this before. You have a like a possessive streak. Yeah, wow. Okay. This, <laughs> they drag me. Drag. There goes my wig. But you like you tend to go for stuff where there is that element of that Absolutely. at play from the beginning. Yeah. And I don't. I find it very off putting. Yeah. So that I, makes sense. So when we're thinking about this next time, we should maybe consider <laughs> that. <laughs> Blind date AUs are great. Yeah, there are good ones are great. out there. We just we, missed the mark. For we missed the mark. Both of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Again, they can't all they, be winners. They can't all be winners. And this could be the dating blind one that you sent me could be good for somebody who knows more about The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Yeah, too. maybe, but I guess Because I do think that not understanding who everyone was contributed to my confusion. That is hard, yeah. And that's fixable if you know the world. But I do think there's also value in, the, in like your whole argument about... 
it being like manipulative almost. Um, yeah. So yeah, some a good thing to think about. Uh, what's our next tag? The next tag is Cinderella AU. You. I hope it goes better. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it will. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I do not. I don't think it will either. Uh, on, on my end, I'm almost positive I'm it almost will not. Positive it won't on mine either. <laughs> okay, so oh, I went no. first last time. You should go first now. Alan, you sent me my first no TP. Do you know what a no TP? I'm is? gonna guess is not OTP. Yeah, <laughs> like someone so, you would never ever uh-huh. ship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, for those who don't know, <laughs> the phrase OTP stands for one true pairing. Yes. So, a ship that is like your ship to end all ships. Mm-hmm. A no TP, <laughs> by comparison, is a ship that you will never read because it's immediately like a turn off for you and you hate it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For me? Yep, yep. Harry Potter Tom Riddle <laughs> is a hell of a fucking no TP. <laughs> Woo! I opened the link and went, fuck, Alan! <laughs> Really? Excellent. I then told Caitlin, who was our beta listener friends, <laughs> Shout about out to you, Caitlin. Shout out to Caitlin, who listens to these podcasts after they first edit them to make sure that we don't sound like idiots on the fandom train. It's too late. And I told her that you sent me a Harry Potter Tom Riddle fic, and she went, Alan. <laughs> I was like, exactly. <laughs> Excellent. So that is important to yes. know because I read this whole thing. Well, okay, the so, title yes. of it is To Be Set Free. By Marin Pippi. <laughs> Usernames are not meant to be read out loud. Nope. The summary is, Harry Potter, raised and abused by the Dursleys ever since his parents died, lives in the cupboard under the stairs. He has no friends or family who love him, and his life is dull until one day a letter arrives for him, written in green ink, that promises freedom. Sounds familiar, right? King Thomas Riddle's illness, combined with his political paranoia, pushes him to arrange three royal balls, after which his son, Prince Tom Riddle, must choose a guest to marry, thereby securing the kingdom's future and solidifying their strength in the eyes of their allies slash enemies. Tom is convinced that he will be able to defy his father and choose no one, or at least he is until at the first ball he meets an attractive stranger with dark hair and glasses who won't tell anyone his name, dot dot dot. Removing the no TP, this is a good fan fiction. Oh, cool. I like, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it's well written. It uses the Cinderella trope well, mm-hmm. while also incorporating Harry Potter super well. The Dursleys in this are a wealthy, established, high-class family. They are obviously abusive to Harry, as they are in the books and the movies. It goes further in this because he remains with them, as mm-hmm. opposed to going to Hogwarts. So you see a lot more of Uncle Vernon, like, beating the shit out of Harry, uh, <laughs> and Dudley being an asshole, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But Harry Potter in this scenario is Cinderella, <laughs> as one does. <laughs> as um, one does. And when, you know, time comes for Tom Riddle to get married, they have, a the, you know, the ball or whatever. Mm-hmm. Harry kind of tricks the Dursleys into, or asks the Dursleys if he can go. They say yes initially, and then they rescind the yes after the parcel tongue incident, which is a direct lift from Harry Potter yeah, world. that's right. Yeah, so there's a lot of direct lifts from the actual Harry Potter stories, which I appreciated a lot. Mm-hmm. I think if I didn't know Harry Potter so well, specifically book Harry Potter so well, I would have missed that some of those were yeah. were direct lifts, but I still would have enjoyed it. Nice. Which is a testament to the writing on this. Cool. It was interesting to me that there was an opportunity. So because... Tom Riddle, as a young man, doesn't really exist for very much in Harry Potter canon. Yeah, yeah. I can see why he might be an appealing character to play with in Mm -hmm. a fanfic, but he was still evil. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) And I couldn't get over it. It's rough. There are some behaviors in this fic, again, that I'm like, that's not good. Yeah, this one was more outwardly also not good. You're like, ooh. Yeah, Mm -hmm. like, there's... Like, I was like, ooh. Yeah. He's power hungry. He's cruel. He can be really possessive in a way that feels dangerous. Mm -hmm. But it is framed as attractive in some ways. Not not fully. Yeah, but I get that. He gets a pass for it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And I don't love that. Right. Um, they never really address it. So I like I would get into parts of it where I'd be like, "Oh, Harry, you precious <laughs> little honey child, you just want to like go to the ball and stop having to clean the foyer." Right. And then it would go to Tom Riddle and be like, "Oh, I don't like you. Yeah, I don't like this. Yeah." yeah. If it had been with anyone else, I think it would have been better. I wish this had been dreary. <laughs> Oh, me too. If it had been dreary, I would have been so much happier. OTP. Because Draco is evil in some ways, 
But he is also... He's misunderstood. He's not misunderstood. He's a dick. But he's misunderstood. But he comes from a family that taught him to be a certain way. Right. And there are moments of redemption in his character where you realize he could have been very different. Yeah. And that is both canon and then fanfic should take that further. Yeah. In this one, too, he has moments where you kind of are like, wait a minute. Like, he goes behind his father's back to tell Tom Harry's name. Because up until this point, so part of the summary mentions this, the Dursleys are also friends with Dolores Umbridge. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. that. Ugh. And so at the point where he is still allowed to go, Umbridge is over for tea. The Dursleys don't want him interacting with them or telling anyone right. who he is. Oh, they forgot. have Umbridge curse him with magic yeah. that he can't say his name or I must not tell lies will car- like carve itself into his hand. Which is deeply fucked up. Yeah. But also, ooh. <laughs> like, wow, what a good dramatic tension moment. Yeah. So that happens. And so after Harry has been to the ball and met Tom and sort of fallen a little bit in love with him, mm-hmm. and, you know, sort of had this spark, he does the Cinderella runaway yeah, thing. Yeah, of course. Classic. Draco is the one to tell him he needs to go. Yeah. Draco comes up to him and is like, the Dursleys know you're here. They're going to kill you. You need to go now. Mm -hmm. And so Harry books it. And Tom is like, no, wait, stop. And Draco stops him. Yeah. And then they have this whole conversation where Draco tells Tom that it's Harry Potter. And, you know, he lives with the Dursleys. And this is all. He gives him the information. So Draco kind of goes behind the backs of those around him that would want him to keep the secret and all of that. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's why I was like, I just wish this was Jerry, <laughs> because Draco is redeemable, and to me, Tom Riddle is not. You are correct, yeah. I, I had much the same feelings you did, mm-hmm. and the whole time, like, you, you keep wanting Tom Riddle to have a redeeming moment, and be like, yeah. oh, he just, he loves Harry that much, but it's never that way. Like, even, like, the romantic moments, you can tell that he's, there are moments where I think he thinks of Harry as his property, he's like, yeah. he's like, my possession, my, my prized, like husband Absolutely. my trophy husband type thing and like uh, at the end not to spoil it but uh we have to spoil it <laughs> this is a review podcast i'm sorry if you are mad about spoilers <laughs> dear listeners get out now <laughs> um yeah so eventually tom finds him like at his at the dursley's house where he's been like locked up and stuff and he shows like his wrath he's about to straight up murder the dursley's yeah. and dolores umbridge and harry has to be like no and there's a moment, too, where Tom Riddle's like, you dare defy me, like, uh-huh. angrily. And I was like, ooh, this is not good. So part of why I chose this is because I thought that that was really fascinating. Mm-hmm. Like, the the whole thought of, like, like yeah, it's Cinderella, but almost like, it's like a fairy tale, you know? It's not always what it appears to be. So, like, yeah, Harry technically is no longer in the, that abusive place, and he will probably be able to do magic and have more freedom. But it's like jumping from the skillet into a fire. But is it thing. better? Exactly. So mm. something about that really fascinated me. Interesting. I hadn't considered it as intentional mm. as I think you did. Right. Because I was reading it as like basically giving a pass because you liked the ship, but it could yeah. very well be something that does done intentionally mm-hmm. in that way that does become more interesting and less frustrating to me right. to consider it through that lens. So that's interesting. I loved Dobby as the fairy godfather. <gasps> yes! Oh, that was the most in-character, so beautiful thing Absolutely. ever. Does Harry, he live in this? He does <laughs> live. Oh, thank God. He does live. Harry sneaks him a sock at the ball. <gasps> that's right! And yeah. He gets freed. He and gets that's freed. why uh, Lucius Malfoy tells the Dursleys that Harry's there, mm-hmm. which is how Draco knows that the Dursleys are looking for him. Yeah. Dobby was the best part of this fan fiction for me. I was like, yep. Dobby, precious honey. <laughs> oh, I love you. So good. You're so good. And he shows up at the end, right? To like tell them, hey, Harry's here. Yeah. He kind of yeah. saves the day over and over again. Yeah. Good, good old Dobby. Good old Dobby. So As cute. per usual. And we should say that this uh, follows the, like the fairy tale of Cinderella where it's like, yeah. it's a, the ball was over three nights. It was like a festival as opposed to oh, just yeah. the one night of the ball. So yeah. Yeah, it was very much like having to sneak out one night coming back before the Dursleys got in, sneaking out, coming back before the Dursley came in. So he was fu- he was playing with fire quite a bit. Yeah. He went hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. But he got to have three distinct outfits, which was important. I love it. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
guys, I'm so glad you mentioned it. They were always different, but I was like, excellent. And, and they kept matching Tom, <sighs> so and I was good. like, Dobby, you sneaky bitch. <laughs> uh, uh, so good. This was well written. Yes, it was. I think having that layer of not having it necessarily be at face value mm-hmm. adds some adds something to it for me that I hadn't considered until you mentioned it. Overall, I think I would give this probably like a 2.8 out of 5. Okay. It is because of the quality of it, but not necessarily the content of it, if that makes sense. Yes. It wins yeah. points for being well-written but more so than it wins for, like, being a thing that I really loved. Okay. I get that. Yeah. Very, you're very harsh today. I am. <laughs> I'm, like, a mega bitch today. I don't know no, why. <laughs> that's fine. Cool. All right. And moving on to the one you sent me. <laughs> I'm worried now. <laughs> <laughs> this one's called Finn. Dorella. <laughs> in parentheses. <laughs> parentheses. By author P. Dameron. Which, good for you, P. Dameron, for, for snatching up that username. Good yeah. for you. It's not even like P. Dameron 4. No. It's P. Dameron. P. Dameron. They, they must have seen the first, like, the, the Force Awakens and immediately ran to Archive of Our Own and be like, I need that name. Yeah. By the way, it's an Archive of Our Own. The summary says... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. It's a Cinderella AU. That's summary enough, right? <laughs> Featuring Cinderella Finn, Fairy Godmother Luke, and Prince Poe, who's just trying his best, okay? <laughs> I love a summary that's not a summary. Yes, I love summaries that are just like, I don't know you what know what, what you're here for. <laughs> yeah, like, let's not mince words here. This is a fanfic, it's a Cinderella AU. With it's a title like trash. Finn Dorella, I think there's just, you don't need a summary. It's gonna be trashy and you're gonna be into it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that being said, I loved it. <gasps> I, I really, really, really loved it. Uh, really? Probably it's been... Are you lying? No, absolutely okay. not. Okay. Yeah. You I, set me up to believe differently. I don't know why you thought that. I, I, I think I said that I, we were probably not... Uh, I was probably not going to hit the mark with the next one, specifically to Mike, because I was oh. like... I Like, hearing your reaction to the first one, I was like, she's not going to enjoy the second one. Mm-mm. No. Yeah. I very much love this one. Yay. This one is so good. So it's very, very, very much uh, Cinderella, straight through. Finn is Cinderella. Oh my god, and I... I was... So angry on this bus when I was reading this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you read fanfic on like public transit. Oh, absolutely. That makes me so happy. Anyone who looks over is gonna catch a big old text of porn someday, and One day. It's, it's not gonna be my fault. <laughs> what was interesting about this particular story is it starts off when Finn is fourteen and he's already orphaned. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's kind of taking care of the, his estate, Trooper Manor, I think it's called Trooper Manor, uh, with Maz. Which is, like, not the greatest no, name. No, But we're going to m- put it in the box on the shelf and not ask any <laughs> questions. Yeah. Exactly. In the box it goes. And he's living with, like, the cook and the servants. Uh, the cook whose name is Maz. Maz is a character. It's Star, in Wars? Star Wars. Is that the, the girl with the... She's the one who owns the cantina. In the new trilogy. The, yeah, the new Gives one. The, the, the big guys. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect, perfect. I did not make that connection until right the second. Ah. So I definitely read it as just some old woman. But now that... That makes plugging, more sense. Plugging that in. Yeah. Um, so Maz. Maz, who is the cook. And it starts... Finn is 14, which you're like, uh-oh. But he goes through, like, his whole day. Like, he, he talks to Maz. And then he goes out to buy potatoes and carrots. Uh, because Maz is cooking a, a dinner. Because some long-lost estranged relatives of his... Like, not even his. It's, like, cousins to his dad's brother or something like that. Lady Phasma and her two sons are coming to stay with him because they're family and whatnot. And Finn, like, so desperately wants a family. And so he runs out to get, like, uh, carrots and potatoes. And he, like, makes his way to the market. And while he's at market, the prince and his party are, like, going through town. And so everyone's, like, lined up on the sides to see, ooh. And, you know, Finn sees Poe, Prince Poe. And he's like, <gasps> And it's so cute, and they, like, make eye contact, and Poe is like, whoa. But then Finn looks next to him, and there's, like, this beautiful blonde girl with blue eyes, and he's like, oh, it's her. Yeah. But then he drops his potatoes on the street, because he's, like, flustered, and he's picking them up, and the prince is laughing, like, you know, endearingly at him, and he waves, and <sighs> so cute. So then he goes back home, and they finish up dinner, and Lady Phasma comes in, and holy shit, I was so angry, Erin. I was so angry. Because there's one thing where it's like, you read Cinderella AU, or you read any type of a Cinderella, you're like, you start when the bad things have already been happening. 
Right. You know, like they, they have already been a servant for this amount of time and that's all they've known. But to have given me a day scene where he's free and like he loves mm-hmm. his cook and like all of this shit. And then this bitch just shows up out of nowhere <laughs> and is like, this is my house, by the way. So I fired the cook. Yeah. Uh, you, your room is now my son's room. You're living in the attic. Here, take this crappy painting of your parents off the wall. I was. It's s- brutal. I was so. Fuck, I was seen red. I was oh, so no! angry. And you were on the bus. I was on the bus. Uh, no one made eye contact with me. Probably a good idea. Uh, absolutely. So that drove me insane. And there's this, there's this line, this motif that comes out throughout the whole story. Basically, he says, still, he supposed he was lucky, all in all, with his lot in life. So he never complained about what he wanted, and he was always grateful for what he had. And it's so sweet and so cute, but holy shit, been grown a backbone. But it breaks your heart. Absolutely. I was so angry. I was like, this bitch, like, she wasn't married to his dad or anything. She's just like, came in, to took over the estate because he's not 18 yet. And she's like, well, I'm your family. I'll take care of your, like, things for you until you're of age. Four years later, if Finn is still working as a, like, a servant, and I'm like, Finn, bro. What's happened? Yeah, you could leave. You are 18. I'm not leaving. Kick them out. Yeah. It's your house. That's it's your house. Well, he's abused. I mean, that's what that's what it is. Was, is like, yeah, and like the whole thought of like, I want a family. And like, I get it. Like, yeah. I get why he didn't. But holy shit, was I angry the whole time. Now you know how Maz felt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maz was not about it. And poor Maz. So that's the first like third of the story and then we skip four years ahead to the morning of his 18th birthday and naturally his like step family forgets his our, it's his birthday and they go out to like do something i don't know and then he is left to do like two or three chores and then he's free for the rest of the day so he's on his way to market on his birthday because he's saved up all of his change to go buy himself a nice birthday lunch at this fucking pub <laughs> and so he's on his way and he hears like commotion off to the side on the swamp and he comes across like poe dameron being almost like assaulted by these three thugs and his po his poor horse bb Mm-hmm. <laughs> is stuck in the mud. BB! <laughs> Poor BB. I love when BB-8 this, becomes an animal. Yes, it's so good. I am primarily a BB-8 as a corgi person. <laughs> Horse comes second, but it's still great. <laughs> but right under corgi, yep. yep. So naturally Finn, like, throws a rock at one of them to distract them and then, like, helps him defeat these thugs and yeah. then, uh, of course, like he... traveling thieves Exactly, or yeah. And so then, you know, he helps Poe get... BB out of the mud and he like jumps right into the mud and Poe is like what are you doing like you're gonna get dirty and he's like I don't care do you want to get this horse out or not and so he's like did you see the rag somewhere (laughs) exactly this might be a step up (laughs) I have never felt cleaner (laughs) mud and I are friends exactly (laughs) and then Poe like not to be outdone jumps into to help and it's like oh cute Mm -hmm. Uh, and I share this moment and it's so so cute also Finn doesn't realize it's Prince Poe oh yes and I love that like, oh, I have no idea who you are thing, which is not how Cinderella really goes. If you mm-hmm. go back to the story, the original, Cinderella is always aware that it's the prince. Exactly. It's the prince that doesn't realize it's her. Yeah. But I love that a lot of the time in Cinderella I use, there is a scene somewhere along the line where they don't know who each other is and they get to kind of get to know each other as just without all of the titles and the whatever bullshit yeah. is going on in their life because it makes it so much better. It's so good. When, you know, they realize later that they were talking to the prince and like, oh shit. Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I did not address him properly. <laughs> what the fuck was I talking about? I could be beheaded. Yeah. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> I have made a mistake. How quickly would I be beheaded if I was talking to the prince and didn't know it? So yeah, then they fall in love like in that little moment where like they're resting ever after having it's rescue their meat BB. cute. Exactly, the meat cute. They're just essentially in the glow of how good each other are. Mm-hmm. And then Han Solo bursts in in classic Han Solo fashion, like, hey, we gotta go. Yeah. He's like, hey, print. And Poe goes, that's yeah, right. Just Poe. Po. Just po. It's me. Uh, Poe. Poe is my name. <laughs> and he goes, Poe. <laughs> So funny. Get on the horse. <laughs> We're leaving. <laughs> it, there are some moments in this story that made me crack up. It was yeah. so funny. There's a quote. The only note I took for the story is a quote that I cannot wait to read to you again. Fantastic. So yeah, they have that whole meet cute and like uh, Poe tells uh, tells Finn that he lives in the capital 
but that he just works there, which I mean, I guess is true. But he works in the castle. He, yeah. <laughs> Technically accurate. <laughs> exactly. Not the full story. <laughs> yep, yep. So fast forward uh, longer. Uh, Maz comes back, I, I think on his 18th birthday, now uh, is the owner of that a pub mm-hmm. that uh, Finn was going to go have lunch at because that owner died and like left it to her. So now she's back and he's really happy about it and he just fell in love with this beautiful man. He's like, it's a great birthday. And it was. <laughs> it's a great day to be yeah. Finn. <laughs> uh, and then comes the, you know, the invitation to the royal ball that the prince has to find a partner to marry. Uh, everyone's invited. It's at the capital. Finn doesn't give a shit about meeting the prince. He's just like... <gasps> I can find Poe because he works there. He'll, he'll probably be working because it's yeah. a big event. Yeah. So he like he's got to be at least caring. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll just find him carrying the wine somewhere. So that's his like prime he motivation for going. He sets his bar so low. Absolutely. His expectations are like ground level. <laughs> but it's so cute. Like he's just like he just, so excited. He just he's in love with this guy. He's like I don't care that he serves hors d'oeuvres. I wanna I wanna be with him. Yeah. He's like it's a, frankly it's a step up for my life. <laughs> exactly. So I'll take it. So then all the natural like Cinderella things happen like where he wants to go and then the his family's like no you can't go or like in this particular case they say no outright as opposed to sometimes where they're like yeah you can come and then they snatch the opportunity back afterwards from the get-go they're like no you don't have anything to wear you're gonna be ugly we're not giving you money to buy anything and then uh someone gives them the bright idea i think it's maz just wear something of your father's and finn is like oh yeah and goes up to the attic and like digs around and finds this like blue suit that was his dad's and he's like it's a little outdated but it'll work it fits nicely (laughs) it'll do and then comes a part of every Cinderella story that just breaks my heart every time, which is when they, like, tear apart the yeah. the beautiful gown that they have spent so much time, like, putting together, and it's usually a dead parents, and ah, it's always so sad. Then his fairy godmother comes into the picture, good old Luke Skywalker, yes! who, who introduces himself as his fairy godmother, and he's like, well, fairy godfather... But Godmother just rolls off the tongue more. He's like, <laughs> we're not going to worry about yeah, it. I that also it. goes in the box on the shelf. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, he's like a like a like renowned sorcerer, like court sorcerer, and like everyone knows him. And, and Ben says, "I thought you were a myth." And Luke Skywalker says, "Well, you were myth taken." <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. That. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing for literally two minutes. You are mistaken. <laughs> and Finn's like, uh. and he's like, that was my best line. Like, it was I got so else. good. Luke Skywalker as the fairy godmother, stroke of brilliance. Oh my god! And then his wand is his lightsaber, and he's like, the most important question you will ever be asked: What is your favorite color? And I was like, this is very reminiscent of every Quizilla quiz I took in as a teenager. Oh, Quizilla! Every Quizilla quiz had the favorite color like yeah. question. I I forgot the Quizilla had quizzes. <laughs> it's in the name! I know, but I use it exclusively for fan fiction, so I forgot that quizzes were a part of that. Oh my god. Did, did, you, did you never read like the stories that were in a quiz? I must have, but I they were blocked so, them out of my memory. So weird and so strange, and they never read the way you wanted them to, but I'm they were sure. great. So he's asked what his favorite color is, and he chooses purple because that's the dress that his mom is wearing in that p- portrait that he has of his parents, and it's so sweet. And so he gets like the snazzy, like purple waistcoat and with tails, and it's it is so cute. a send up of a suit that John Boyega wore. <gasps> what? It's in reference to a particular outfit. One second. <laughs> Hold for Google search. Oh, yeah, you're gonna hear me frantically googling. Uh, John Boyega is beautiful. Oh, he's gorgeous. He is a tall drink of water. Absolutely. This is beautiful. Yeah. Okay, I see it. That this fit came out shortly after that. I'm one. I was like. Did you write this so that way you could put him in that purple suit? Because <laughs> I would respect the fuck out of that. <laughs> I mean, I just want to write a fan fiction where he wears a purple suit. And yeah. that's it. Cinderella, he was my means to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so good. And so he goes to the ball and arrives fashionably late. Everyone looks at him. And then here comes Poe in like this snazzy, like rust colored jacket. Is Which again, God damn it! Is a reference to his orange flight suit. Oh, how did and, I not get yeah. that? Oh, that's right. Oh, I'm feeling real dumb right now. <laughs> Alan, this is why you have me. Caitlin. I remember all <laughs> of the weird. Oh yeah, and Caitlin. So when I fail you, <laughs> we both have Caitlin. So Poe runs up to Finn and like, hey, you made it. I didn't think you were gonna make it. And Finn's like, yeah, this is so great. And then. 
uh, of course, everyone was like staring at them, and Finn's like, "Why is everyone staring at us?" And a herald steps up from the ba- to a balcony and says, "And now the prince will ask for the first dance of the night." And so Finn is like looking around, like, "Oh, where's the prince?" <laughs> and then Poe just bows in front of him, like, "Can I have this dance?" And Finn's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, Finn goes, "Oh, oh no, <laughs> oh dear." But oh yes, exactly. But to his credit, he just takes it in grace, and they dance, um, and then they have the classic, like, the dance is finished, and they sneak off to the gardens, because it's always the gardens. It's always the gardens. Always the gardens. It's never, like, a hallway. <laughs> no, it's never, like, the library or the study. Yeah, and a library would be great. I would love a library. Li- well, because then that would be Beauty and the Beast. You are so right. How are you so smart? But yeah. in, like, the Cinderella movie, it's, like, the balcony. Yeah. Oh, I guess there's a fountain, though. Maybe it's, like, a balcony garden. It's outside, is the point. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So they go to, like, a garden, and Poe tells Finn about, like, how he's a few days or, like, a, a month or so away from being 21, and that means he's gonna, like, uh, be cor- coronated. Is that a word? Yeah, coronated. Cool. He's gonna be crowned. He, he, he's gonna he's gonna ascend it to king, essentially. <laughs> he'll ascend this, <laughs> this plane of existence. <laughs> yeet himself off this yeah, astral he's plane. Yeet himself out of this plane. I love the phrase yeet. It's so good. But it's not appropriate for me to use it. Because I am <laughs> not a youth. Always use it. I am not youthful Always enough use to use the phrase yeet as much as I do. Take it from them. I love it. So he tells Finn that he's going to become king. He's going to be mm-hmm. crowned king because he's about to turn 21 and that he's getting pressure from all of his like advisors and the queen regent, which is Leia and is a brilliant move, mm-hmm. honestly. Uh, yeah, so he's getting all this pressure from his advisors and the queen regent and everyone saying you need to marry because it's been so long that the queen regent has been ruling that we want to give them the idea that, you know, there's stability in the kingdom to kind of ease that transition. And he's like, I don't want to, like, I don't really, like, I haven't found anyone. And then he's like, but I guess if I had to, I want to find someone that I could, you know, tolerate or like, like, and it's... Yeah, it's the good Prince Charming version where it's like, if I have to do this, I want to do this with someone I could grow to love. Exactly. And I understand the responsibility, but I also don't want to be unhappy the rest of my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Leia's like, fair. (laughs) I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I understand. However, I'm a badass bitch and I don't have time for your feelings. Exactly. So... Get your shit together. <laughs> yep. So then they're like, they're in love in this garden. And then it turns 1130 at when Finn, of course, hasn't given his name. And Poe is like, okay with it. He's like, oh, you're playing hard to get. Cute. I love it. Yeah. 1130. And Finn's like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, 1130 comes. And I love this because I feel like it almost never happens in Cinderella Fix where it's like, it's 1130. Finn looks at the watch. And is like, oh, you know, it takes me about a half hour to get home. I need to leave now. <laughs> so I still have a ride. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we love a queen who like plans their time wisely. <laughs> we love a responsible Cinderella here. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's at this moment that Poe's like, oh, wait, wait, I need your name. Wait, no, stop! I thought it was a cute thing we were doing. Come back! Yeah, he was like, wait, 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 I was playing the long game. <laughs> I didn't know we were on abbreviated timeline. <laughs> oh, and so uh, at some point in the garden, they trip and fall into a fountain, but Poe had taken off his coat because it was hot or whatnot, and so he gave his coat to Finn because he didn't want him to be cold. And uh, so Poe kept Finn's purple jacket Mm -hmm. and Finn ran away with Poe's rust colored one. Oh, he's chased by people uh, for the prince. Like they're. Yeah, uh, he sends the guards after him. Immediately, which I love. I'm like, this is exactly what should, like, it should always happen this way. Like, someone's like, follow him. If you're going to abuse your power of, like, privilege and ruin the country (laughs) to, like, set yourself up, then, like, yeah, go for it. So he gets back to his town, ducks into an alley right at midnight as the pebble turns back to a pebble. So he's in rags except for his rust-colored jacket. And then... He still has Poe's jacket, specifically. Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm. And then uh, this woman, like, sends the guards out a different way. It's like, oh, he went off towards the sea, and so the guards leave. And that's the introduction of Ray as a character, who's a blacksmith, <gasps> and Ray. so quirky and loving, and it's great. Uh, and then Maz comes in, and they ask him, like, why are you running away from the prince? And he's like, well, because I'm a servant. That whole thing, or like, I'm a servant, and he doesn't know I'm a servant, so he wouldn't love me if, I, if yeah. he knew. But I thought a really cool angle was also that he, like, he knew his stepmother, would try to take advantage of his position mm-hmm. if he were to become, a, like, a king consort or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, and I can't give her that much more power. He's right. like, I, I won't do it. Like, I don't want to ruin Poe's life, too, in that yeah. way. I will not be responsible for giving this woman anything else. It was so good. Such a good yeah. thing. So then, Because that's better than this ongoing, like, self-deprecating. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just not good enough thing. Like, no, that's a that's a legitimate it's thing. It's so good. Although, one would argue, I would argue, Finn, just grow a backbone and tell her to fuck off. You're 18. It's your house. Act 
accurate. Mm. But like, again, box, <laughs> yes. shelf, not asking. <laughs> exactly. So then we go into a period of the story where I felt like it could have vastly be shortened. I feel like we should have introduced Ray way sooner. Because mm-hmm. then it became a thing of like, well, now we have to give Ray an explanation of like, who is she? And yeah. spoiler alert, she's Luke Skywalker's child here. And like, mm-hmm. he abandoned her because he was afraid of Kylo Ren, like, because he started killing all the Jedis and like, mm-hmm. was coming after him. And so he dropped his child. He yeeted his child <laughs> into a desert. And was like, bye, I'll come back later. Bye. He came back, could not find her. And he's like, no. <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's clearly trying to shove Cam into your fan yeah That's exactly what that is. and sometimes it's like just leave it out like, exactly you don't need it. so we go into like a couple of months uh i think it's three months where he's like living his life uh finn is and like poe has sent heralds looking and like has, has announced that he's going to marry the guy the mystery person he danced with toward the end of the story finn comes home and finds phasma holding the rust color jacket which he still had hidden upstairs in his attic mm-hmm. room and she's like here's what's gonna happen you're gonna marry him you're going to marry off my two sons to high in high ranking positions. And then I will rule the kingdom uh, from like the shadows. And that is exactly what Finn was trying to avoid. Exactly. So he has this moment of like, shit, I am not able to stop this from happening unless I do something. And so then he's, he tells her no. He tells her to mm-hmm. fuck off. She's like, all right. And throws him in the basement and locks him there. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, uh, people come looking for him in Poe and his entourage. And like, so now everyone knows where to find him. They come and they like, they unlock him from the basement. And so Poe and Finn go up to his attic bedroom to like have a moment of privacy. Yeah. And they talk about how they're in love with each other. And yeah, then Finn takes his, por- his parents portrait and he's like, all right, I'll marry you. And they walk downstairs and they're like, all right, we're leaving. Uh, where's Phasma? And, and Maz is like, well, uh, I reminded them that this is your house and you're 18 now, so you can kick them out. So they ran away so that you wouldn't get any retribution. And I was so angry. Yeah. The best part of any a- Cinderella AU is seeing how the step family is like fucked over at the end. And we didn't get that satisfaction. So you added a, a, an element of like, oh, here's everything nice. And then you see it taken away and then you don't get any retribution. They just run away. I hate it. Yike. And then the story Oops. ends. And it was happily ever after. And it was cute. As any good Cinderella AU exactly. wraps up. That was a long summary. It was a long summary. But that was probably good because we breezed through the first three because we didn't like the first three. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. This one was so good. Highly recommend. It was so sweet. So cute. And if you thought you weren't going to like the story, you were myth taken. I hate you. <laughs> it was so good. Myth taken. <laughs> myth taken. <laughs> so what would you rate this? Um, I'd give it a solid 3.8. Out of five. That's your, like, go-to, it's good, but I don't want to commit to it being great yeah, number. Th- this was a fic that had me, like, aw, awing the whole time, but I was never fully, like, it didn't make me cry. And usually, if you make me cry, we're at the four. And we're oh. at, the, at the four mark. Good to know. Oh, no. I will bear that in mind. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks for thanks for tuning in for another action packed episode. <laughs> yeah, full of snark and sass. Yeah, hopefully, and Aaron being hangry. <laughs> hopefully, next episode we will both come from a, a loving place, a gentler place. Uh, I know. Remember that episode where I was really nice about the fan fiction? I, I didn't do. Like? I was. So, th- this is the thing: is I don't know what to expect, and sometimes she's so nice, and I'm like, yeah. oh, this was a breeze, and then sometimes she's angry, and I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble. I refuse to be consistent in my. <laughs> Uh, rubric. <laughs> this is good, probably. It just means that I have to be more, like, steadfast about my decisions and be like, this is why I'm cheesing them. Cheesing them? You're cheesing I'm them. I'm cheesing them. Yeah, no. D- you can definitely defend your fanfic choices to me. I'm just gonna be yep. opinionated Absolutely. about Absolutely. To quote myself, I have a lot of opinions and not a lot of ideas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, well, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.